Hey, what's up everybody? Tony with La Lita Loca, here to kick off a new series that we're calling Cruise Lingo. So have you ever been reading Facebook posts or watching YouTube videos and you hear somebody say something like uh, MDR or Mustard Drill or, or Formal Night and you're like, I, I don't even know what that is. Well, this series is for you. So in this first episode, we're going to cover 15 terms that might be helpful for new cruisers or first-time cruisers to be aware of. Now, if you're old hat to cruising, a lot of these words will be familiar, but if this is your first experience, you might need some help. All right, guys, the first term we're going to talk about today is embarkation. So honestly, embarkation is really just a fancy term for the process of getting on the ship. Uh, it involves going to the cruise terminal, another term we'll look at. It involves interacting with porters and people that are checking you in and security. But if you hear the word embarkation in any of the uh, YouTube videos that you watch or on any of the forums that you may participate in, all they're talking about is the process of getting on the ship. So just like we mentioned in that definition for embarkation, where it all, where the magic all happens to get on the ship is the cruise terminal. So much like an airport terminal or a bus terminal, it's where you actually go to uh, get on the vehicle that you're going to be on. So if you're going to an uh, you know, airport terminal, you're going to get on a plane. If you're going to go to a bus terminal, you're going to get on a bus. Well, guess what? At the cruise terminal, that's where you go to get on the ship. So there's going to be all kinds of activity at the cruise terminal on the day of embarkation. There's going to be uh, porters there taking your luggage. There's going to be people there checking you in. There's going to be security there making sure that you're bringing on the appropriate things. And then finally, there's going to be a gangplank onto the ship. So before you ever get on the ship on embarkation day, you're going to have to pass through the cruise terminal. <sighs> I did it again. In the last definition, I mentioned the term porter. So porter might be a word that you don't use in your everyday, uh, everyday life, but in the context of cruising, the porter is the guy who takes your luggage at the cruise terminal. So on embarkation day, when you either take a shuttle or you self-park or somehow get dropped off at the cruise terminal, one of the first people that you're going to look for is the porter. And that's the person that you're going to give your large uh, checked luggage to. So you might have some carry-ons, you're going to keep those with you, but your big suitcases you're going to give to the porter. Now just a tip, it is uh, customary to tip the porter. They're not a part of any other tip pool, so uh, you tipping them means a big deal. And it's customary to tip between uh, 2 and $3 a bag for the luggage that you're dropping off with the porter. All right, guys, so you've made it through embarkation, and now you're on the ship. So there's going to be a few terms that you run into that you might not be familiar with if you're a new cruiser or a first-time cruiser. Uh, the first one that I can think of is stateroom. So stateroom is really just a fancy word for cabin. All of the uh, cabins on a cruise ship are called staterooms. That's how they're identified. So if you hear the word stateroom, they're just talking about the different cabins that are on the ship. So another term that you might run into that you might see when people are talking about cruising is this concept of a steward. Like, what's a steward, right? So a steward and stateroom kind of go hand in hand. Steward is the person that attends to your stateroom. So that's going to be the person that cleans your stateroom. And each steward is assigned uh, a certain amount of stateroom. So you'll have the same person throughout your cruise taking care of your room. And this is somebody that you want to get to know. They can be very helpful. They can bring you ice. They can bring you extra towels. Uh, a variety of things, but this is the person that's assigned to your room. So another suggestion that I've seen many people make is to make sure that you give your room steward a little extra money, a little extra tip uh, to, to help ensure even better service than they already give. And also make sure you give that tip early in the cruise. That kind of alerts the steward that uh, you're somebody that, that wants a little extra attention. And, and they're very good about giving it. So the steward's the person that takes care of your stateroom and really any request uh, that, that you need uh, pertaining to uh, your living conditions for the time of your cruise. So another thing that you're going to encounter on the first day that you're on the ship is the muster drill. So muster drill, think of it as safety drill. Think of it as the, you know, that three minute presentation uh, that they give you, a, a, you know, at the beginning of an airline flight. They have to do that also for cruise ships, just to make sure everybody knows where to go in case of an emergency, what lifeboat you're assigned to, and, and really what to do if, if things go sideways. It's precautionary. It does take longer than the than the airline uh, spiel, 
but uh, they're gonna gather everybody up. All the bars will close. Everything that you can do that's fun on the ship will close down for the duration of the muster drill. And usually these are only, you know, between 20 and 30 minutes, if that. So, uh, but it's important that you go to the muster drill. They do uh, scan everybody's uh, ID to make sure that they've accounted for everybody, that they can verify everybody's been through the safety presentation. And if you're not there, they will come looking for you. They will assign you to like a uh, kind of a timeout muster drill where you have to go again uh, in a smaller group somewhere else on the ship. So it's important that you're ready to go and that you attend the muster drill. So another term that you get really familiar with is Lido. So Lido is an Italian word. It means beach. But Lido is actually used in the cruising industry to represent the deck that the pool is on. So this is, you know, you're looking for the Lido deck if you want to go get in the fun and the sun. That's where you're going to go outside to the pool, and that's going to be the Lido deck. So another term you're going to run into when you're kind of watching videos or, uh, or browsing forums is the, is the term MDR. Uh, for the longest time, I didn't know what MDR was. All that stands for is the main dining room. So on most cruises, uh, you have an option to eat in the main dining room or to eat at one of the other uh, locations on the ship, whether it be the buffet or a specialty restaurant. But traditionally, every cruise and every uh, ship has a main dining room that offers a menu on a nightly basis. Uh, normally, that's included in the price. Sometimes there's items that are upcharged. But for the most part, you can go there, have a choice of appetizers, entrees, and dessert. And here's the secret. Uh, when you go to the main dining room, you can order as much as you want. So if you want two appetizers, get two. If you want three appetizers, get three. If you want to try all the appetizers, try that. Two entrees, two desserts. It's not uncommon to see somebody have two desserts, two entrees, two dinners. Whatever tickles your fancy. You paid for it. You're on a cruise. Get what you want. So another term that's often associated with the main dining room is formal night. So uh, the main dining room during the cruise, usually one night during the cruise, will host uh, what's known as a formal night. It's this night where they have a special dress code. They don't want guys in shorts and sandals. They don't want ladies in tank tops. This is really an opportunity on your cruise to dress to the nines, take a nice suit, take a nice dress, and kind of treat yourself like you're going out, uh, you know, looking fancy. That's what my wife and I call it. Each day in your cabin, you're going to get a list of the activities that are going on on the cruise. You just want to make sure that you check and find out what night is formal night. And then that way you can get super dressed up. Normally on the same night, they're going to have uh, an opportunity to meet with the captain and get your picture made with the captain. And then there's always a lot of photographers to take that special picture of you in front of a cool backdrop when you're dressed up. So make sure that you take clothes for formal night. So an important word uh, to know when you're on the ship is uh, CD or cruise director. So you'll see this a lot uh, in, in posted writing. Uh, this CD was great or uh, I really like this CD so and so. Basically people are talking about the cruise director. And so the way I like to think about the cruise director is almost like a master of ceremonies of the circus. So the captain is in charge of the ship. He's the boss, right? So he's getting us uh, where we need to go, when we need to be there, and he's taking care of all the rules and regulations. Well, the cruise director is kind of the boss of the fun, if you want to think of it like that. You'll hear him come over the uh, loudspeaker with announcements. He'll announce uh, events that are going on. And this person is really just uh, in charge of making sure the good times happen. There's a lot of great cruise directors out there on cruises. There's people that are very loyal to certain cruise directors. It doesn't take much of a search to find out who the best cruise directors are. But if you see that uh, term CD or you hear somebody mention cruise director, just think that's the master of ceremonies, the master of fun when it comes to your cruise vacation. The term that you hear a lot is sea day. So basically when you're on a cruise, you're going to have days that you stop at a port where you're actually going to get off the ship. And there's days where all you do is sail around the sea to get to that port. The days that you don't get off the ship, those are sea days. So if you see sea day, that just means you're going to be on the ship all day. Normally the, the cruise lines will do something like a special sea day brunch uh, or, or other activities to make that day at sea um, enjoyable. I mean, every day to me is enjoyable on a cruise. So related to sea days and, and, and porting is uh, the word tender. So on days that you port somewhere, it's either going to happen one or two ways. Uh, the first way is that the ship will be able to pull alongside a pier 
and uh, they'll be able to drop a gangway and you'll just be able to walk out on the pier and walk into your port. But not all ports are uh, able to accommodate a big cruise ship. So to overcome that for ports that can't accommodate a cruise ship, they use a smaller boat called a tender. On ships that require a tender, the ship will anchor somewhere off the shore and you will actually leave the ship onto a smaller boat called a tender and that tender will actually take you to shore. So if you see the word tender, really just means small boat to get you back and forth to the bigger ship. All right, so I wanna talk briefly about the ship account. Uh, most cruises are a cashless system. So that means at the beginning of your cruise, you're going to fund a ship account in some way, either through credit card or through cash. And what happens is they will give you a card that represents yourself on the ship. So most of the time that card will get you into your room, it will identify yourself, and then it also becomes the form of cash for you on the ship. So Carnival uses a sail and sign account and a sail and sign card. And once you're given that card, you can take it to anywhere that would transact uh, any kind of cash on the ship and use that card in its place. So if you're at a bar and you want to drink, you can present your card, that card will be swiped, and then your ship account will be charged. Now what happens at the end of the cruise, you're going to be presented with a, a folio, almost like a hotel stay. So at the end of the day, you're gonna see all your charges that you've accumulated with the, uh, with the card that they gave you, and then that way you know how much you're gonna to have to pay or how much your credit card's gonna be charged at the end of your cruise. So that brings us to debarkation. Just as simply as embarkation was the process of getting on the ship, debarkation is the process of getting off the ship. If there's a debarkation day, uh, there's a debarkation process, and much like you had to go through a process to get on the ship, you have to go through a little bit of a process to get off. You have to do certain things with your luggage, you have to go through customs if you've gone out of the country, and you, you have to do a few things to get off the ship. That's debarkation. I do want to bring one more thing up, and that's this conversation of boat versus ship. Uh, on my first cruise, I spent a lot of time calling the cruise ship a boat. It's not a big deal, uh, but what was interesting is I ran into a, a Navy man uh, on the way home, and I was talking with excitement about this cruise that I went on and how exciting the boat was, and he pulled me aside, and he was an older gentleman. He said, uh, look, son, you know, uh, there's a difference between a boat and a ship. I said, uh, you know, a boat will fit on a ship, but a ship will never fit on a boat. And there, there is actually like a naval definition for it. Any vessel that can carry another vessel is considered a ship. And then any vessel that actually goes onto another vessel is considered a boat. So you'll see lifeboats on the ship. You'll see the tender boats that actually could go on the ship or connect to the ship. So I don't think it's a big deal, but you, you, you could get corrected. It happened to me. So that's just a little aside on the difference between a boat and a ship. All right, guys, that's it for the uh, Cruise Lingo, the newbie edition, the first time cruiser edition. Did I get all the terms that you're struggling with? If there's ones that I missed, if you wanna just drop me a comment or send me a question, that would be great. Uh, we've got a nice uh, community over on Facebook called the La Lita Loca Cruising Community. We just talk about cruising. We have a good time. If you wanna join us over there, feel free. If you like this video, you could give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like it, hey, go ahead, give me a thumbs down. Uh, if you haven't yet, maybe hit that subscribe button and hit the bell next to it so you can get notified uh, when new videos come out. We're constantly making videos related to, to cruising. There's a video out there for the uh, carnival excursion called Faster the Fun. Uh, we've got one more detailed about the sail and sign card. We have some uh, vlogs from our cruise uh, on the Carnival Fantasy in April of 2017 and all kinds of things. So feel free to join us. Thanks for watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.